Here we go. <laughs> so my heart for us this year is, um, it's up there actually. It says his name, his renown on a mixtape. Um, <laughs> does anybody not know what they are? Isaiah 26, 8, it says, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, that is the posture of our hearts. Walking in the way of your laws. Yes. And the law is not just, it's not just talking about the Old Testament, but it's talking about Jesus because He is the fulfillment of the law and the prophets. We are walking in the ways of Jesus yes. and we are all about His name and His renown. That is yes. the desire of our hearts. The message version says who you are, God, and what you've done is all we will ever want. The NLT version actually says, our heart's desire is to glorify your name. And that is my heart for us as a team. Um, why? Well, it's pretty simple really. Uh, however, you wanna, however you wanna say it, you could say it heaps of different ways, but basically all we do is to make much of Jesus, is to spotlight yeah. him, is to make it all about him. We are a team who is on the front lines. We are a team who is often very seen. And we know that everything that we do is for His name and His renown, that He would be glorified. Yeah. The Bible says when He is exalted, when He is lifted up, He will draw all men to Himself. And that is why we lift Him high. That is why we yeah. exalt Him. Yeah. And it says, at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that He is Lord. So that's why, that is why we are all about that. That is my heart for us this year, His name, His renown. That's our anthem. That is our theme song. That's what we're going to buy a plane for and ride it in the sky. We're going to get flags. <laughs> we're going to raise it like a banner. That's, that's it. We're not really. We're not really. We, if you want to get a banner and you want to make it, that's fine. Um, <laughs> if you want to buy a plane and you want to ride it in the sky, that's cool. Um, that is what we're about. And I just wanted to share with us actually three foundational things, three very practical foundational things that are a huge part of our team. A lot of you might already um, know all about the three ships, guys, the three ships. <laughs> the three ships. I wanted to share with us tonight these three ships that are very foundational um, for our team. And they are worship. Yeah. See where I'm going with this? Yeah. Stewardship. Right. And leadership oh. hey, the three ships <laughs> worship stewardship and leadership sorry about my flapping book <laughs> i just can't do digital i figured like when i talk like it's too much like i'm on my phone and it feels rude <laughs> so i wrote stuff down instead and it was really liberating pen and paper guys get onto it <laughs> it's good stuff <laughs> it's the future <laughs> So this first ship, worship. Mm. Woo. Worship. This speaks of our personal response to Jesus. Yeah. This is not even getting started about singing on stage or playing an instrument. This is all about yeah. our walk with the Lord. This is all about John 15 where it says, Abide in me and you will bear much fruit. Yeah. This is about walking in step with Jesus. This is about seeking Him first. Yeah above all other things and this is absolutely bedrock and foundational for us as Christians, yep. as disciples of Jesus. This is yep. it. This is where it starts and ends. We seek Him first. Um, so that's worship. I'm going to just like breeze through these. The next ship is stewardship. And this one just basically says, you got a gift, kid. You got a gift. <laughs> you got a gift, kid. We acknowledge that the Lord has gifted us. If you look around this room, mate, it is a room full of gifts. Different, beautiful, fancy, shiny, wonderful, some tied up with bows, some with all the fancy wrapping paper gifts. The Lord has given you a gift. And this is something that we actually want to steward well so that we can serve the Lord and we can serve His people well so this is why we prep this is why we practice this yeah. is why we um sharpen the tools mm. this is why we hone our craft this is why we watch like random tu um, youtube tutorial <laughs> videos yeah. and get singing lessons and learn the words yeah. speaking to myself here <laughs> and <laughs> 
it's a hard yeah. thing to do. Sometimes they just go in the brain and then fall out at, at the back somewhere. Um, but this is why we this is why we prep. This is why we we put in the work because we want to be a good steward with what the Lord has entrusted to us, and we want to serve Him, yeah. and we want to serve His people well. That's the sound of turning paper. <laughs> Uh, no scrolling here. The third. So the first ship is worship. The second ship. You got it. The third ship is leadership. Oh, yeah. Ooh, this is a fun one. This is a really fun one. This is all about how we are in front for a reason. Yeah. We are in front to lead. We are in front to help people. If music helps a person sing, leadership helps a person worship. Yeah. Leadership helps a person enter into his gates with yeah. thanksgiving Great. and with praise. We foster that in this place. That Psalm 100, that is something that yeah. we are just like talking about all the time because we know we all need assistance. We all need yeah. to be reminded. And so that is is pivotal that we um that we go to that place of thanksgiving and praise. Um, it's about helping people respond to Jesus. And sometimes we're gently taking them by the hand and sometimes we're like running together. And sometimes it's just a matter of helping someone remind them, to just lift their eyes because the, yeah. Lord, the Lord is your hope. The Lord is your help. He is your very present help in time of need. Yeah. He does not ever leave you. He does not forsake you. That is our beautiful, beautiful role and privilege. And a phrase called shepherd work. That's what we do as yeah. leaders. We help people. We yeah, help good. the flock. Yeah. <laughs> we help them get get into that place where they can they can finally see him, where they they can lift their eyes yes. to him. Yes. So there are three ships. Yeah. There are there are three foundational ships. <laughs> Feels like there's a metaphor, but I'm not getting it. So I'm going to move on. Worship, stewardship, and leadership. How are we going? We're feeling good. Really good. Great, great. This is like a bam, 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 like really quick, good. quick time. Wow. Yeah, great, cool. <laughs> so that is, my, that is my heart for us this year. And that it, they are three very practical things that are foundational to our team. You might, you might be very aware of them. You might be totally unaware. And that's okay. That's just why I wanted to talk about it tonight. Yeah. And now I just want to talk about what I see for us as a team, Whew, what I see, where we are going. And when I was praying about this, I was like, Lord, what do you see for us? Um, the Lord actually rem like helped me see that in order to see that where we're going and what is ahead of us, um, I, need, I need to acknowledge like what has gone before us. And there, are, there is an amazing heritage that we have as a worship team. Yeah. There are people in this room who are here because someone else prayed for us to be here. Yeah. Myself, for example, I joined the church in 2011 and I know that the Lord is leading us as we drove across the Nullarbor, not <laughs> knowing where we were going, quite literally, to east. That was about it. <laughs> but the, I know that people, people prayed for us to be here. I look around at even people who have joined in the last few years, like the Cavs and the Holtz yeah. and Michael McQueen, your family as well. Like yeah. we prayed for you guys to be here. We didn't know who you were or what you looked like. But now that you're here, we know. Yeah. <laughs> we prayed for you guys to be here. And now that, that is our role for the generations to come. That is our role for the people who are coming go. after us. And um, Deb, I just love that you talked about this tonight because it's totally where I'm going with this. <laughs> Isaiah 61, that is a part of our inheritance and what we are leaving behind. And the Lord is calling us to occupy more of that space, yeah. more of Isaiah 61. And I am just going to read it because it's so good. It <laughs> says, The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me because everything that comes after this is about people. It is about others. It is about those who are still in captivity. Yeah. It is about those who are still prisoners. Is it, it is about those who are still grieving, mm. who still need comfort. Yeah. So the spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me because he has sent me to proclaim freedom for the captives. 
He has sent me to release from darkness the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort those who mourn, to provide for those who grieve, to bestow on them, the people, those who are not yet here, a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. Yes. That is what I see for us. We are going to occupy more of that space yes. this year. Uh, the Lord, the Lord has more for that, more for us in that, and. Um, I see a team who is front-footed in their approach to leading people into the presence of Jesus. The first to praise, the first to lift their hands, the first to, to bring thanksgiving for all that He has done. The Levites in 2 Chronicles 20, they went out into battle. They didn't go out with weapons because they were the singers. They sang the song, give thanks to the Lord, His love endures yeah, yeah. forever. They went out first, that's us, we go out first. And we declare the goodness of the Lord and all that He has done Wait, for us. Yeah. Turning the page, that's that sound. <laughs> <laughs> I see a team who are prophetic in their approach yeah. to leading people. And that's not anything airy-fairy or weird. That is just seeing things that are not as though they are. Yeah. Calling something at how you see it in the Lord. Um, and we know that with, with His words, the Lord created and He has given us this very same ability. So yeah. we use our words when we come into this place, when we come to pray, before we even rehearse, we are ready. We are speaking hope into this place. Yeah. We are speaking life and peace and joy into the people who need it. Yeah. Um, and we can create this atmosphere. We can create that and speak Jesus Come into on. this place. I see a team who are Holy Spirit led. And some of these things, you know, they already happen, but the Lord has more for us. So that's where we're going. A team who are willing to go off road if that's where the Holy Spirit leads. Yeah. I see a team who are expectant for God to move because He said He would. It's yeah. got absolutely nothing to do with yeah. us. It's because He came to seek and save the lost yeah. and He invites us into that. And so when we Amen. come into this building, we know God's going to do something. Yeah. He's going to rock up. He's already promised it. He already wants freedom for his people. He already wants the lost to come home. He already wants the prodigal son to return. Yeah. So when we come into this building, we know God is going to move. Our hearts are expectant. Yeah. He said, where two or three are gathered, there I am among you. So we know the Lord is here. He is going to move. Great, we are ready for what we're not ready for. Yeah. Ooh. Oh yeah! Like what's going to happen? I don't know, but God's going to do something. Yeah. It's going to be really good <laughs> and we're going to follow Him. I see a team who do not grow familiar with the room or the service that they, they are on at, the people that they see out there or with the presence of the Lord, mm. but they come hungry. They come knowing that for somebody in a seat somewhere, today is the day of salvation. Yes. Yes. So we're going to stir up our hearts. We're going to stir up our expectancy and our faith for what the Lord is going to do in this place. I see a team who come expectant and desiring to see the kingdom of God among us, to see the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. That is like a super scary sentence to say <laughs> because that means it might get messy, but I think that's really okay. Like this is the world. <laughs> Nobody expects it to be perfect. It's not a, not a pretty place sometimes. That's not what I'm talking about. Anyway, keep going. <laughs> Good. We are we are hungry and we desire to see the Holy Spirit move. We want yes, to see yes. His kingdom on earth yes. as it is in heaven. And Pastor Richard always says that is the signs of the Holy Spirit moving. So that's signs and wonders and healings and people praying in tongues and speaking in new tongues. That's what we want to see. That's what we're expectant for. Mm. I see a team who boldly ask the Lord for the sake of others. When we come into this room and we know that we're on, we're going to pray that people are saved. We're going to pray that people are healed because that's what the Lord wants. Yeah. It's His work. Yeah. He does it. We're just His servants. We're obedient. Yeah. We get on board with what He's doing because He invites us into it. I see a team who is missional, local yeah. and global. You know, we know that where the Lord has placed us, that's your mission field, where you work, where you go to uni, yeah. 
uh, your family, that's your mission field. Um, you are a minister to all those people that you see every day where you get your groceries. Like you might be the only person who smiles at your checkout person, smile at them. They need a smile. Yes. <laughs> and we are missional globally. What we do, we partner. We partner with our incredible church and our incredible leaders who have such reach into incredible places in the world that we might never go. But we are a part of that. Yeah. We are a part of that global mission. Yeah. I see a team who desires that those who are lost will be found. Mm. I know that that's your heart because that's the Lord's heart. He came to seek and save the lost. I feel like I've said it like 500 times tonight. I'm so sorry if I did. It's true. But that is why he came. So that is what we will ask to see in this place. Um, I don't know what the year holds in terms of restrictions and masks and singing, blah, whatever, so over it. Like, <laughs> we're, all, we're all pretty over it, aren't we? Yeah. We don't know what, what is ahead of us in terms of that. But I believe the Lord is calling us to look beyond it and to, to lead beyond it and yeah. to... Um, That's right. We know that he, he goes before us and we know that we are in this together as a team. None of us are as good as all of us. And I just love, I've just, for those of us who, are, who have been praying for the McPhersons, everybody's just been like sending messages every day, like praying for him. That is just, that is just the heart of this team right there. Yeah. When one of us is down, then we get down there with him and we pray with him and we love him. Yeah. And that is what I just love about this team. Um, we know that he is leading us into what is to come, um, regardless of what it looks like, regardless of what lays, lays ahead of us in terms of the situation, you know, the P word, pandemic. <laughs> anyway, sorry, sorry, talked about it too long. <laughs> um, so that is what I see for us. That is my heart for us as a team and that is what I see for us oh, um, this year and and our hope is in the Lord our expectation is in him he does the work um, the scriptures say I have no idea where classic me um, but it says <laughs> that Paul plants the seed Apollos waters it but the Lord is the one who causes the growth he's the one who does it and he's the one who is calling us so so we say yes to him again yeah. and again and yeah. again yeah. because he yeah. is good and he's doing a good thing on this earth. Um, and I'm just going to pray right, right now. <laughs> Lord Jesus, I just thank you. I thank you, God, um, for, your, for your call to this team. I thank you for every person who is in this room and every person who belongs to this team who's not in this room. We think of them as well and we lift them up to you. God, I thank you for the call that you have placed on us. Lord, I thank you for those who have come before us and I thank you for those who are going to come after us. And Lord, we just pray that we would see more people come into this church who don't know you, that we would see more people come into this team, Lord God, that you would cause the growth, that you would be the one who brings growth. And Lord, right now where, we're, where we are weary, we just ask that you would strengthen us. We just ask that your joy would be our strength, Lord God. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that you give us rest and you give us restoration and you give us everything that we need for every step. So, Lord God, I just thank you for what lies ahead this year. I thank you, Heavenly Father, that you are with us, that you go before us, and I thank you that you have given us one another, Lord Jesus. I pray all this in your name. Amen. Amen. Amen.